Right now on your fast track to seven, we have continuing coverage this morning on a murder outside a popular South Fargo bar. 28 year old Michael Diedrich has now been arrested for murder in connection to a deadly stabbing outside of the Southtown poorhouse. It happened early yesterday morning. Police say the name of the victim in this case will not be released until family is notified. The stabbing happened just before 1 a.m. yesterday. Fargo police say Diedrich and the victim were arguing inside the bar before they were both asked to leave by staff. Police then say Diedrich stabbed the man outside and then ran off. Police Captain Bill Allfelt has some cautionary words for people who may find themselves in this type of situation. I would, I would always say if somebody's trying to, uh, uh, trying to get you into some type of fight or altercation, probably best to, to walk away if you can. Um, obviously, everyone has a right to defend themselves, and, and uh, they know when that time would be or right if they had to. But always best to try to walk away and, and, and get out of that situation if you can. Captain Allfeld also making note of the teamwork of the entire force getting an arrest for murder in roughly 12 hours. So you have breaking news like this on right on your phone. Make sure you've downloaded the VNL News app. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL News in the App Store today. The preliminary hearing for a Fargo woman accused of attempted murder was continued yesterday. The state made the request on behalf of 24 year old Princess Gway, who's accused of running several people down with her car in the Cairo restaurant parking lot in late February. They say her attorney received all of the case materials, but hasn't had time to review them. As she pointed out, it is voluminous, so I think a continuance is appropriate here. Also, according to, it looks like court records, Mr. Bradal was brought on um, around March 8th, so it's understandable that he may not have had time to review the file sufficiently. Looking ahead, Gwe is due back in court May 8th. We're learning more this morning on a child pornography arrest of a Fargo man that happened on Wednesday. Investigators say they were tipped off by an apartment's main, apartment maintenance worker who said a man had printed photographs of child sex abuse material. Joel Schumacher was arrested and is charged with 10 counts of possessing child porn. Court documents say the maintenance worker noticed printed photos and during the search warrant, investigators seized nearly 400 photos as well as 200 DVDs and two computers and an SD card. Records say Schumacher admitted to using multiple computers to download, print and purchase photos and videos of young girls. 653 here on our fast track into our holiday weekend. We're sending things right on over to Lisa Green for a closer look at our forecast this morning. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. We are looking at some travel that's going to be impacted. If you have some Easter weekend travel going on, today is going to be a day where we're going to have to pay close attention to what's happening out there, road conditions and the radar as well. And we do have an alert here. You can see it's more for central North Dakota right now, but we do have a couple of counties in the alert. That is a Wells County and also uh, Roulette County here in the in the viewing area here where we're in that advisory winter weather advisory until one o'clock this afternoon. This is an area that's going getting more measurable snow right now, but we are seeing precipitation right here in the valley as well. You can see the area of snow that's a little bit larger from Bismarck and points north and then a line of snow showers and what could be some freezing rain too. We've been seeing a little bit of that on our DOT cams that's lifting to the northeast. Uh, there's also a line stretching uh, from that a little front sweeping southward that once in the southern valley we see this line move through. We may see a second round, whereas in the northern valley, the snow and the precipitation may be ongoing. Zooming in just a little bit more, you can see the snow and or mix kind of right on the doorstep of Fargo Moorhead stretching back into Minnesota and then you see back over toward Jamestown. It's just now departing affecting more places like New Rockford and the Carrington area this morning. We've actually got a really pretty sunrise in Fargo. We've got that cloud deck overhead, but just enough sliver of clear sky in the east to let in that pretty sunrise here. Looking at temperature of 30 degrees, very warm in Fargo, especially compared to yesterday. Jamestown reporting a little light snow and Bemidji again a little bit colder to the east. We're into the teens there and as we work our way through the day today that potential for snow will continue in, in in the valley anywhere in the valley. We have that possibility throughout the day for Fargo. Our best bet is this morning and then I just showed you that line extending southward. That's a little bit farther west that may sweep through this afternoon and bring another round, but temperatures are going to be milder in the south. We're looking at some upper 30s, so snow is more likely to melt as it falls or we we could even see more of a mix in the south, whereas up north, that's where temperatures are going to be closer to freezing, and that's where we've been talking about that possibility for some accumulations, maybe an inch to a couple of inches of snow there, just enough to coat those roads and make them slick. And then heading into the holiday weekend, Saturday quieter, Easter Sunday, we'll watch for a few flakes in the south on Sunday morning. 
After we get through that, we're looking at some conditions that are going to be pretty nice into next week, some 50s to come. So Easter arrives and then we see springtime return to the valley. I don't know. Those are some pretty stunning sky views this morning. Wow. It mm -hmm. is beautiful in yeah. those areas where we're getting a little sun. Enjoy it while you can because we'll likely yep. see those clouds take over more uh, throughout the day in places like Fargo. Okay. okay. Just take it all in. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Well, prom season is in full swing. Maybe you already have your date and your dancing shoes, but do you have your dress? Well, the Valley today's Tata Miller is live at the prom mm. shop at Cheyenne High School in West Fargo. Find out how they bridge the gap for affordability for the big night. Good morning, Tatum. Good morning, guys. Yes, it is all glitz and glam up in here. We are surrounded by prom dresses at Cheyenne High School in West Fargo. I'm live with Kim Zemer, who started the prom donation shop. So can you kind of describe what this looks like? Uh, we started with maybe a dozen dresses and saw a need in the community for affordability when it comes to prom. And so we started asking for donations on Facebook and kind of putting it out there that we wanted to grow this program. And it went from a dozen dresses to now over 500 that we have here. That is absolutely insane. And I know you've been able to witness all the benefits firsthand. So how can we donate if we want to contribute? Uh, if you have a dress or a suit sitting in your closet taking up space, we will take it. Um, you can drop it off anytime during school days or hours um, at Cheyenne High School. If you need a tax donation receipt, we have those as well. Uh, keep in mind, we are on break until next Tuesday, so don't come today. <laughs> um, but um, we'll take anything. If we decide that it's not for a prom shop, we can also use those um, uh, dresses for our theater department. Amazing, yeah. double use. So you've been dealing with this for about three years now, right? Mm -hmm. So do you have a favorite dress right now? I do. <laughs> This one right here. She is a beauty. I've put it on a couple of students. I can't get them to take it, but it's got an open back. It's just timeless, classic, old Hollywood style. I love this one. Gorgeous. If you are looking for a prom dress, you can come to Cheyenne High School. So what kind of students can take dresses from here? Anybody. I don't, it does not matter um, if you are going to prom, even if you just have an event. Um, come get a dress. It's, we need to take that affordability out of prom. If somebody wants to go to prom, we're going to make that happen. That is incredible. Thank you so much, Kim. And if you want to come by, just make sure to call the counseling office. Again, they're not back in school till Tuesday, so don't call today. But I am Tata Miller for Valley News Live. We'll check back in with you later. Back to you guys at the studio. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for a live look at those stunning gowns this morning, Tatum. Wow. Yes, and Cheyenne High School will have their prom on April 27th. The countdown is on, but the shop is open to any high school student in the FM Metro, as you heard right there. Well, in Grand Forks, the Downtown Development Association is getting into the Easter spirit by hiding eggs all around town. As of last check, there are still a few left, but the golden egg has been found. Mm. Hints are posted on their Facebook page daily, and if you do find one, you're asked to take a picture, post the photo, and tag them. One family sharing their photo saying they found an egg and it had candy and two movie tickets inside. Very fun. Well, Easter is this Sunday, as we know, and this year the Cadbury Bunny is no bunny at all. Look at him. The 2024 Cadbury Bunny is a two-year-old raccoon from South Florida. <laughs> Louis the Raccoon will soon make his TV debut in a Cadbury commercial. The win also comes with a $7,000 cash prize. What's he going to do with that? <laughs> oh, this was the sixth annual tryout year. Nothing says Easter like Louis the Florida <laughs> Raccoon. Well, this all played out in true March Madness fashion with animal lovers voting in a bracket-style elimination tournament on Instagram. So congrats to you, Louis. Well, the Today Show and CBS Mornings are just about to start. In the meantime, soak in the beautiful yeah. sunrise this morning on our Good Friday. Thank you again for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful Easter holiday weekend. My name is Ashlyn Hill. And I'm Alex Larson. Take care.